welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a mountainscape image out of gradients and how to clip mask that to a circle to keep all the edges tidy. I'm starting out today with an A4 landscape artboard and on that artboard I'm going to place an image that I have found, this one's from Pixels, that I can use as a reference image. So I'm going to navigate to find that. So to do that I go to File and Place. Now with this image I can just click and drag and drop and I now have this reference image that I can start using. Now when you're looking for an image for this tutorial you just want to find something that has different lines that you can follow. So I can see here I've got different hills in the foreground and in the background going right through to mountains. Um, it's just a, something to follow. You can make up your own mountains. It just gives you a guide as something to work to to practice your skills with the pen tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this layer here. I'm going to toggle on the lock and I'm going to add a new layer. This is the layer that I'm going to start drawing on. I like to lock it just so my reference image doesn't move around and then I just start drawing on the layer too. I'm going to do the first um, mountain with a pen tool and then I might use a few different tools throughout the tutorial just to practice my skills and see how they work. So with this pen tool what I want to do is I want to create the line of the mountain and then because I'm putting a circle in the middle to um, clip to I need to make sure that I go right the way around and make a closed shape outside of where I want to start off with. Um, and again we're just using this as a guide you can be as close and as accurate as you like. Okay, so I have my first shape here and I've just picked a random one in the middle to start off with. And you can see that uh, it's actually covering up most of the mountains in the image. So the way that I'm going to work with that is I'm actually just going to remove the fill. I can do that over here or in my swatches panel. I've just got Essentials Classic on today. Uh, so with that I can still see I've got my line and I can keep creating new lines around the mountains and hills. Uh, this time maybe I'll use the paintbrush tool. So again, just going to follow this line up here and it can be pretty rough you can spend more time um, on this I'm just doing it fairly quickly and again I'll need to come in and close that shape so I'll show you how to do that now I'm going to zoom right in grab my direct selection tool move these points so they're near each other and then I could either use the join tool to join it but I like to use my pen tool so we go we use the pen tool there and now I've got a closed shape now for the purposes of this it doesn't matter that the lines are different because at the end we're going or, you know through this tutorial we're going to change the fills to gradients so I might use the pen tool again for this next one there we go and as I said just doing this fairly quickly you can take all the time you like and you said just go around the bottom bottom space and connect it back up and then maybe for this one I'll use the pencil tool which is here pencil tool something slightly different get a different feel for how your different tools work if you have something like a tablet that you're working with um, that will give you a different feel as well just how you like to work there we go and that kind of gives you quite an organic shape you might want to try the blob brush again I'm just going to come back in with my pen tool I'm going to put this this mountain in here Okay, and I don't need to worry too much about these scraggly edges out the outside because I'm going to tidy those up later. Okay, so I've got a bunch of mountain shapes here. They don't look like much at the moment, but that's fine. Um, and I can copy and paste them. I can add in some more later if I want to. This just gives me a little bit of a range that I'm working with. So the next thing that I'd like to do, I'm just going to toggle off the visibility on my reference image. I can do that here. I'm going to leave it locked. I'm going to leave it in my... Um, layers panel for now because it can just sit there quietly in case I want to add to it later and I'm going to click back here now with all the shapes that I have here I'm just going to click and drag a marquee over the top and I'm going to change it so they've all just got a solid fill and no stroke and I might just come back and click them all individually and give them all slightly different colors just so I can see what I'm working with for this one I might just bump that one up higher and what else have I got on this one and as you can see it's sort of hard to see what I've got that I'm working with so I need to reorder my layers there's a couple of different ways of doing that I'm going to do that in the layers panel 
by opening the layers panel, opening down this uh, menu here, and now I can see all my different shapes. So I have actually colored them all individually. You can see here I've got gray, red, you know, blue, orange. That just helps me see which one I've got. I want to move some of these around. So I'm going to click and drag to the top. Uh, so I think actually that one needs to go in the middle somewhere. This black one probably needs to come to the front. This red one, maybe in here. Okay, so now we've kind of got them in order. Um, orange, grey, blue, red, black, in my case. But you can choose however you want to make yours work. I might actually just, I'm going to, no, that's that's fine. So this actually looks kind of nice and subtle. So now I have these different kind of wave patterns or mountain patterns. Um, they're more just form and shape than they are actual mountains at this point. Uh, I'm going to make all of these into gradients. And I might just um, make them, I might just start with one. That's probably sensible, isn't it? And I can do that in my gradient panel. So I've opened up my gradient panel here, or I can open it up under window gradient. And with the fill selected, I'm just going to select this gradient. That's just the existing one. And I can always add to this from here. I'm going to keep that as a linear gradient. I'm going to change the angle though and I want to change this to 90 and that's because I want my gradients going from um, the horizontal axis not the vertical axis and I'd like to change this in here so I'm going to change it to a uh, bit of a funky color now this is something that you can spend hours on finding the right kind of color combination for what you want to do I'm going to do this fairly quickly so you can get the gist but please um, play add in extra colors here uh, so when I hover over and you see this cursor change to a white cursor with a plus symbol that's where I can add a color I'm going to just pop one in just so you can see I'm not going to leave that in um, but you can add in an extra color you can also remove a color so to do that I just grab it and drag it off okay so I'm going to do that throughout these mountains I'm going to speed this bit up but it'll just be me having a play with gradient and color and getting a bit of a look and feel that I like Okay, so I've got something I'm reasonably happy with now, though because I'm putting a circle over it, it's actually going to um, cut out some of the bits of this drawing I like. Now, I wouldn't normally suggest this. I really like to have things um, scaled proportionally, but because this is a bit of an abstract drawing, I'm actually going to draw a marquee with my selection tool around all of them and just squish them up a little bit and move them into the center. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a background in. So I'll just grab myself a rectangle. I'm going to click and drag that out and right mouse button click and I can send that to the back so uh, go to arrange center back and I just want to change the colors in here maybe make it mm, there we go okay so I've got my mountain ranges I did squish them up a bit made them quite abstract but I used a reference image to just help me draw out some shapes and get a bit of a look and feel I've added different gradients but within a sort of a color scheme together and I've added a background in there now the last step is to add a clipping mask now clipping mask can be really really handy when you are creating work and you want to tidy edges away um, there's a few different ways you can do draw inside but today we're going to look at clipping mask and I'd like you to do that is to come over to your shape tool grab yourself an ellipse tool you can either click and drag or for the purpose of today I'm actually just going to click on the artboard and I know that I want my ellipse to be 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters and I click OK so I'm going to place it over the part of the image that I like that I want to crop to so you could just click that over so you can just see the stroke and you can see through and what you're looking at I'm pretty happy with that now the important thing with a clipping mask is it is a shape that sits on top of a pile of shapes within your layers panel and it's the shape that is on top that the rest of what you select will clip inside or clip to so let's just open up our layers panel here and you can see here I've got my different paths that I created I've got the rectangle that's the background and sitting on the top is my ellipse that is what we're going to clip to 
I still have my reference image um, toggled off so we can't see it. So that's great. So what I need to do is have all of these selected. I could click and draw a marquee around them on my artboard. But just to show you another technique, you can actually select over in your layers panel. So I'm going to click on this circle on the side, hold down shift and select all of them. And now I have everything selected. So for something like this where you're selecting everything, that's not as handy. But if you have little bits and pieces that are hidden behind and you just want to select certain pieces, that can be a really useful tool to learn. Okay, I'm going to show you several different ways that you can access the clipping mask. The first is we have everything selected. We have our circle on top, which is what we're clipping to. And I can go up to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. There we go. So I now have my drawing that I've created. Uh, and it's clipped inside this circle, which just really neatens it up and gives it a really kind of interesting look. Now, once you've created a clipping mask, you can still edit what's inside. We'll do that in a moment. I'll show you another way um, to create the clipping mask. So I'm just going to go Command Z to step backwards. Now I'm back at the same position where I had all of my shapes in the clipping mask that I want to use sitting on top of the shape for that. And then I can actually right mouse button clip and go to Make Clipping Mask. It's another way. So that's fantastic. I'm just going to click and drag that. In fact, maybe I'll put that in the exact center of my artboard. And the way I'm going to do that is use my align tool. So under window, align, I bring this panel up. I want to align it to my artboard. So I go this selection here, align to artboard. If I align it horizontal and vertical, it's now going to be sitting in the exact center. I'm just going to pop this over here on the side. Fantastic. So let's just have a look now how we can enter the clipping mask. If you wanted to edit it a bit further, you might want to edit the colours or move things around a bit. So what I need to do is double click. And you notice here up in the top, it says layer one, uh, sorry, layer two, which is the layer that we're on. And we're inside the clipping group, which means I can pick up and move some of these around. So we might just want to change the composition a bit. I might want to grab this mountain and add it again down here. There we go. So maybe I'm adding in a few other little elements. I might want to change the color of the background or extend that up a little bit like so. And then when I want to go back outside of my clipping group, when I'm happy with my composition, this is annoying me a little bit. So I'm going to move that over so I can see more of the pink there just for a bit more balance. Uh, I can go back to my layer and now I'm back on my artboard. I've got my drawing sitting on my artboard in the center within a clipping mask. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sure you could do lots of really interesting things with drawing shapes and gradients, layering them up and adding a clipping mask for a really cool effect. Thanks.